Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Tonight I went to a gala, so I am like in a cocktail dress with like a full face of makeup and I thought, you know, if that's happening, I need to film a video. So the video that I was gonna film for you tonight is just a little idea that occurred to me and that is what is my, what did my makeup collection look like before I started YouTube? Like what were my go-to products when I just had like a drawer full of makeup and not like an Alex set of drawers full of makeup? So um, I thought that I would walk back down memory lane and like look at just the tried and true products that I used to love and see how many of them I still use today um, from kind of my original makeup stash. What's still good? What am I still using from those days? I did not have that much makeup, guys. I didn't use that much. Um, so let's talk about what I started with. Um, before I started you, so let's just take a walk down memory lane for one second. When I started YouTube that was like 2017 and I probably started growing my makeup channel in like 2015 or 2016. I would say 2015. I had my daughter when it was 2014 and I did not really wear any pregnant uh, any makeup when I was pregnant. Like so say 2014 through two th no 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 back up. 2009 when my first son was born through 2015 I was wearing like minimal makeup when I was pregnant and had small kids I just couldn't I just couldn't do it it was just too much like it was enough to have a full-time job and small children like babies and so I was just not into makeup and when my daughter was born I started wearing more makeup again and that was when I started really growing my makeup collection and started my YouTube channel in 2017. So really the makeup we're talking about today is the makeup that I wore before I really like had kids because that was when I had time to actually put on makeup every day until now, like the kind of more present times. So the tried and true foundation that I wore for like years and years and years and years was the Studio Fix by MAC. So this is like my 27th compact of it. I mean, I just went through compact, through compact, through compact. I love this stuff. The shade that I wore was C3. It still looks great on me. I almost never wear it now because I have so many other compacts, but like I literally went through so many compacts of this. This is a great like powder foundation. One of the things that I really like about this compared to other powder foundations is that it did not settle into lines like other powder foundations. Like for a little while, I was wearing the Makeup Forever powder foundation. I mean, this was years ago. I don't even know if they still make it, but I can tell you for sure, I remember wearing that foundation and it's settling into my fine lines around my mouth, settling into my fine lines around my nose, and I did not like that as much as the Studio Fix because the Studio Fix never did that. And I just applied it with a little sponge that came in the Studio Fix. Like it came in the bottom of the Studio Fix. Like I would either wash it or you can go to Mac and you can get like replacement sponges. So I would get a replacement sponge. But um, I went through so many of these compacts and I really thought it was the best powder foundation. It was super easy. I know I wore this all through medical school and residency. You just like took your sponge you like wiped it all over your face. It like decreased the redness, you know, mattified your face and it lasted the whole day. So this is an awesome product for people that are like not, that don't have like massive makeup collections. Try MAC Studio Fix. If you have a coloring similar to mine, try C3. It's like mostly got a yellow undertone and it's just a fantastic product, great product. In those days, I did not wear bronzer. So I just put that on my face. And in those days, two blushes come to my mind. The first one was a Clinique blush that is no longer made, but it looked very similar to this. So one day when I was in Atlanta, I was walking through Duty Free and I found a blush that was the same format, except for the squares were all like bronzy colors. And I loved that blush so, so much. It was like a combination of like a bronzer and a highlighter and I would just swirl my blush around in it and like use it as a blush. And it was gorgeous. It had like a little bit of a blush effect, a little bit of a highlighting effect. I used the entire compact up and by the time I used it up, it was not being made anymore. But at that time they did have this, which was the like black honey version of the same palette. And so I bought it and this is the same thing. It's got a little bit of blush, a little bit of highlighter and it's really, really super beautiful. And when I do use this, I just swirl my brush around in it and I put it on my cheeks and it's really pretty. But I loved the kind of bronzer version of this, which was such an awesome blush. Use that entire thing up. 
Um, another old school product that I used was this Clinique blush, um, which I still use, believe it or not, which is called Almond Blossom. And it's kind of got the same vibe as the bronze version of this had, which is, um, this one has a little bit of bronzer, a little bit of highlighter, and when you swirl your brush around in it and you put it on your face, it just gives you like a nice glowy bronzy look to your face. And it was just a really easy way to warm up your face. And so I, this is old you guys. In fact, recently I've been using this a lot. What I did is I just took an alcohol swab and I rubbed over the top of it to like disinfect it and I keep using it and my skin's okay. So you guys, no need to throw away your makeup when it's lots of years old, especially powders. I don't think that powders really like get like a ton of bacteria. I think that cream products do need to be thrown away and I think that lipsticks have a limited lifespan, but like powders, I think you can run an alcohol, like an alcohol swab over them and I think they work just fine. Um, the last blush that I wanted to share with you guys was NARS Orgasm because back in the day, like before I had kids and before I had a YouTube channel, I did have a palette, like a, not a palette, a compact of NARS Orgasm. This is like a mini. I no longer have the original compact, but I know for sure that I hit pan on the original compact and I loved it so much. And I thought that it worked great over Studio Fix. So I'd put this on, I would put some blush on and I would like leave. I didn't bronze. There was like no time for that in my life in those days. And um, yeah, I really, really loved orgasm in those days. So this is kind of something I always have on hand. I think it's like one of the greatest, most universal blushes. You cannot go wrong with it. And um, it's so good in 2019. So for my eyes in those days, I did one of two things. If I was doing like a quick look, I would use something like this, um, something that was like this Maybelline color tattoo. I know I went through an entire, um, an entire pot of this at one point um, because it's so easy. You just like stick your finger in it, you rub it over your eyes and it autumn and you put it in your inner corners. It automatically like evens out your eyelids, gives your inner corner like a nice like glow. It just like, is the easiest way to take your look up a notch. So I remember back in the day I used this or a product like it and I just like swiped it over my eyes if I was in a rush. And then on the days when I was wearing like more like actual eyeshadowy looks, my two go-to eyeshadows were Woodwinked. This is a four pan palette that I have four shadows in, so just ignore these two. But in those days, I know that I went through multiple pans of Woodwinked, which is this one and Honey Lust, which is this one. I know I've showed these eyeshadows like a million times on my channel, but it's actually what I'm wearing tonight. Like I am wearing Woodwinked and Honey Lust. I'm wearing all four shadows in this palette tonight, actually. How perfect is it that I'm doing this video right now? Seriously, how great is this? I happen to be wearing these shades on my eyes. I'm talking to my husband. But anyway, tonight what I did was I used this color right here, which is actually a Makeup Geek color. And this is Brune from MAC. And so I put the Makeup Geek in my transition, Brune on the outer V, and then I use Woodwinked all over the lid and Honey List on the inner corner, and that's what I've got going on tonight. I'm gonna come in. You guys, these are like the most true and, true and tried, tried and true shadows. I have been using them for years and years and years and years and years, minus these two. But the Woodwinked and the Honey List, I've been using for 15 years, like literally. Those two shades are so good. Like, if I had no makeup collection, I would still be using those two shades because tonight I went to a gala and like those were the two shades I chose to wear because they're just so good. They're just so awesome, these two shades. MAC, I don't know. People like don't talk about MAC shadows anymore, but I think they're amazing. I have so many MAC shadows. I still think that to this day, like in 2019, MAC shadows are better than Too Faced shadows. They're better than, who else are they better than? They are better than, I can't think of, MAC or, let's just say this, MAC are still in my top five to six shadow brands. I still think the MAC makes an amazing shadow and nobody talks about them because they were like the first big shadow company and now everybody makes shadows. You know, Anastasia makes amazing shadows. Natasha Denona makes amazing shadows. Vizier makes amazing shadows. But I really think that if I were to rank like my top, five, six, seven, eight eyeshadow brands, MAC would still fall in that top tier. They're great shadows, their shimmers are amazing, their mattes are amazing, and they still like represent you guys. So, okay, back in the day, um, before like say like 
from 2000 and even before, from say 1999 to 2009, I was using two Urban Decay eyeshadows. One of them was called Yeo, and it's just the white Urban Decay eyeshadow. And what I would do, eyeshadow eyeliner, what I would do with this is I would just like put it on my inner corner and my inner, like, like a little bit like lining my eye with it and then put it on the inner corner. I used like this pencil was so easy. It was such an easy way to do just like an inner highlight. And so I used that for years. This is actually a remnant of one of my really old ones that I just never threw away. I could probably use it. I just disinfect it with like a alcohol swab. And then the other one was just zero, which is just like the Urban Decay black eyeliner. This is what I would like line my eyes with. I have this little nubbin from back in the day also, which I would just line my eye with because it was so nice. Like it actually, dry, it was one of the early liners to like dry down and not move. Like in the day when all eyeliners didn't do that, the Urban Decay eyeliners didn't move. They did set and they didn't move, which is why I love them. And which is why like I would use them till they were like little nubs. So the white one was like an amazing highlight and the black was an amazing liner. You could smoke it out if you wanted to. You could just line your eyes if you wanted to. So these were like in the original Fisher collection right here. Next, for mascara, for years and years before I had a makeup channel, I used the Maybelline Rocket Volume. I don't know where I learned about this. I don't know why I used it, but like I do remember using this for sure in like 2007, 2008, like for sure, for sure. And with this, I used the Clinique Eye Mascara Primer, which was like, I feel like the first mascara primer there was. Like when nobody was making mascara primers, Clinique was making one and I liked it and I used it underneath this rocket volume. Next for lip liner. For years and years, what I used on my lips was this Bobbi Brown lip liner in the shade Heather Beige. When they discontinued this, like sometime around like 2010, 11, 12, I don't know what, I bought I bought every one that I could find from every department store. So I have like 20 of them. Um, I think I probably have 10 left at this point. It's still my favorite liner and it's still my favorite formula. And I still think it is the best color for my lips and my skin tone. Heather Beige, I'm gonna give you like a little sample of it, but this is it. And I still can't find like an exact dupe for this, but it is like a pinky brownie lip liner that is creamy, best lip liner ever. It was expensive because it was Bobbi Brown, but it was totally worth the price, you guys. Best lip liner ever. Bobbi Brown, I know you're not seeing this, but if you are, bring back Heather Beige. Best lip liner ever. And my go-to MAC lipstick, like for years and years in the early 2000s was gel. You guys have talked about this before on my channel. I still have three or four of these. It's like a frosty peachy gold. And I would line my lips with the Heather Beige and put the um, gel in it. And it just looked great. This is such an awesome lipstick. Even to this day, like I always have one in my purse. It's just like an easy, Go to matches everything lipstick and when you pair it with like a nice pink lip liner It looks so nice you guys and that's it. That was my original makeup collection you guys like circa 2009 10 that was it. That was all I had um, And maybe like a few other things here and there, but that was like my go-to kind of ride-or-die makeup and um, It's kind of crazy to think that like in the last 10 years my makeup collection has grown to what it is I kind of justify that by having a YouTube channel But when I really think about it like I did fine with these products for so many years and like this Is still a total go-to this Bobbi Brown lip pencil is still a total go-to This Mac lipstick still a total go-to you guys have he heard me talking about rocket volume in the last year or two. Like this is still like a great product. So like, and so is NARS Orgasm. So like the things that I used every day, like a decade ago, 15 years ago, even near 20 years ago, are still great products, you guys. Like they're still amazing products. So if you are looking to like save money and not buy the latest and the greatest things, try the things from this video. They're still amazing. And I know that because I've tried every makeup product on the market in the last decade. And I still think that this little basket of things that I showed you tonight is fantastic. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that video. It was really fun to make. I hope everybody is doing well, having a great night. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye.